Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to look at converting the uh, venerable uh, 28BYJ-48 stepper motor here from being unipolar to bipolar. So uh, basically what I have here is on, on the iPad um, a bit of a, a description here. So in a unipolar scenario we have a five wire uh, matrix sort of as we have here uh, with the uh, 28BYJ-48. That's a mouthful to say but you can see the hopefully the five wires here. So one of the problems though that when we look at this you see uh, on the diagram. Basically it's splitting the coil sizes, if you will, uh, versus the bipolar. So look at the number of coil, the coil area versus the coil area for these. So um, not really kind of going to go into all the detail, but the idea here is is we want to give this little motor far more torque because again what they're sort of saying, and this is a good web page and I'll link to it, um, because uh, they talk about the modifications in, in driving this, but basically what what it says here is uh, he's gone from making this modification from about 380 grams per centimeter to 800 grams per centimeter, so, centimeter. so roughly almost a three-fold, a little short, about 2.5-fold increase in power from this little motor making this conversion. Now one of the pieces that we're doing is we're working on a conversion um, uh, building a camera slide utilizing this cheap little motor uh, both for size compactness and, and cost but the problem is is it simply does not have enough torque to pull the camera in, in, in uh, gantry along so by doubling um, you know by 2.5 uh, times its power I'm hoping hope, hoping that we increase this output uh, and can actually do this. So uh, this in this episode what we're going to do is go over uh, making the modifications to the motor itself and then we'll do some other videos with uh, how to connect it and everything else. So uh, with that being said one of the things I kind of want to jump into here is uh, how we do this. So when we looked at this site you know it says okay we got to take off this blue cover. So this this blue cover is on here. Now one of the things to know is that there there are teeth underneath the, the this front cover because you have this front cover and you can see it's it's pressed on hopefully here uh, and then so but removing this is kind of a pain so what I suggest is taking a small screwdriver actually smaller than this one small regular and getting underneath here and prying this piece up because what we'll find when we do that is once we take the piece up and I'm not sure it's going to fully come out is that there are there are teeth that um, Move the iPad out of the way here. There are teeth underneath here that that hold it hold it down, clip underneath this bracket. Now, I, I doubt you will get these back in. You might be able to try tipping it back in. My my thing is, I'm just going to probably snip these off with some wire cutters. Use some um, basically snips such as these. Snip these off. Put a little piece of hot glue on here and call it done. Just so this is protected. But one of the things um, I wanted to do is, is show this. So now there's a couple different ways that, that we can make this modification because the modification is going to be to this center trace here, this, this red wire, uh, if you will. So we need to cut this trace. And then what this will do is, is take out the, the red, the, the, the center tap coil that we showed in the diagram, and then it will leave these two as being magnetic you know, drivers to each one of the, the side coils uh, back in the um, piece. So, just trying to, if we go back to the diagram, just bring back the iPad for a quick second. So, if we if we look at this again, if we get the light glare out of it. So, so again, this is the red wire. These center taps are the red wire. So, we're going to do away with that. And then the end product we're going to have is just the bipolar configuration of the two magnets driving the motor. Okay, so um, we can do that with this exacto knife. We can kind of try to cut the trace. Or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going the power route. So uh, very handy tool, uh, if I can kind of get it in here. 
Uh, it's just basically a battery powered Dremel tool and the piece I like about it is it's got high speed low torque so when it runs in things it, it stops and, and so that's good but what I also have on here is I use these for my CNC machine also uh, this is actually for a PCB milling uh, setup but small aircraft based uh, mills and so what I'm going to do is use this to actually cut that trace more cleanly than than with the exacto knife so basically what we do is we turn this on now I have this set in a vise and I, I got to be careful with my fingers but there we go so it's done a very quick job of uh, cutting the trace because one of the things with the X-Acto knife, and I, again, I'm, I'm not sure the camera is going to be able to focus that close, but you can kind of see now where I've made the cut of the uh, trace. And again, I'd suggest wiping it off a little bit and you can kind of, kind of see, but uh, it makes for very, very good work in tight spaces. And again, there's a clear gap in this. So now, as I mentioned, I'm just going to take um, my nippers and come back in here and nip these off you know if you feel confident you can kind of ratchet that back in good luck um, I think it's more of a headache and uh, you can actually even snip off this red wire here you no longer need this red wire uh, but I'm gonna show just show this now this this back piece you can probably still uh, just making sure you get in camera you yeah you can still get that back in and then kind of snap this back down and that even actually sort of holds it. I'm not going to push it all the way back down because I want to remove the wire, but that that actually, even without any glue, is holding it snugly on there, so that does work. It's a little bit cockeyed, but I just don't want to snap it fully on. If it snaps fully, it'll it'll actually work. So, again, just you can take off that red wire and then connect these up. Now, it won't work. I'm trying to think if I got one of the modules around here. But here's one of the modules in another carrier that I built. Um, so this module will no longer work with it. So you need, um, I'm actually looking to see if I have one handy. I don't think so in my junk box right next. But you'll need a, um, uh, actually, uh, a stepper driver to drive this. And i got one laying around here somewhere. I just can't seem to find it. Uh, to, to do that so or build your own stepper driver however I'm really interested to see if this does yield the extra torque that they claim on the internet now I've seen a couple um, actual 3d printers and stuff built with these motors with this modification so that's telling me that um, it, it, it's actually somewhat must work and if this actually works I'm also thinking about building a, a small um, either laser or CNC machine out of these. Again, these things are so cheap, folks. For like um, 15 bucks, you can get the motors and controllers for five of them off of Amazon. So uh, they're just great little project things, and especially integrating it with 3D printed stuff. If you look back at some of my other videos, I've done um, uh, different gimbal mounts and things like this using it, camera sliders, uh, like I just showed. You can go up onto my Thingiverse site or my website and, and pick this controller up. So you can integrate this to whatever you want. You make a clock out of it. You can make a control out of it. Um, uh, I've actually thought about using something like this for uh, window shade control. Again, 3D printing um, a connector here that goes on the blind arm. Now, this as it stands here might not be enough, powerful enough. It might, might actually work a blind, actually a smaller one, but a bigger one. You might have to do this modification. Um, just looking to see what other parts I got. or uh, Because I've got another version. Uh, here it is. So I've got this other version, too, that, uh, again, you, you, you could use for uh, doing blind. So since it sits vertically like this, you mount it on the wall, it's got screw holes to attach. Again, you 3D print a holder there to connect to the wand and again clean up some of the wiring uh, to this. But again, another good opportunity for this motor. Again, it's such a versatile motor. Uh, you just can't go wrong. I love experimenting with it. Uh, tons of different opportunities. Also, Amazon has the uh, four pin Molex connectors that you go on here and you can jumper it to the Arduino or what have you or um, 
etc. The other piece that, that's rather interesting through control scenario uh, for home controls is, is telephone wire. So um, if you're like myself, you no longer use the, the four, four conductor telephone wire infrastructure in your home and instead, um, uh, you know, basically have wireless, etc. But you can repurpose that for home automation system controlling and, and connecting to this for, and have your Arduino in a remote location. So, again, just some tips on, on using these little motors, making some modifications. We'll follow up when we get this uh, actually in the camera platform driving it. So, hopefully this helped. If it did, please hit like below, subscribe to the channel. There will be more good stuff coming. Cheers.